Well, as you can see, it's cold outside. It's below freezing here. And then the shop is about 40, but I got my heater on to make it a little more comfortable. I'm going to start our 12,000 uh, mile uh, test or uh, checkup here. And uh, one of the things, I've got some of the other panels off already. But one of the things I wanted to show you is that once you get the two, two uh, screws, the uh, Phillips head ones in here underneath the, uh, the little metal foot plate, and you pull out the three pop pins that go along in here, it helps to take your prime tool here. Well, these guys up here with the top can be a little, little more tenacious than the ones down below. Um, when I first took this panel up, I thought I was going to just literally break it apart uh, when I uh, took it off. Let me get my other panel here. Where is it at? Here's the one that uh, was on the right-hand side when I had my incident. And you can see all the these two up here were broken off. This one down here was broken off, and these two were sheared off too. But I was able to so, able to use some... Uh, System 3 makes this uh, epoxy called Gel Magic, and I use a lot of it at my boat building. And I was just curious, I had some out, so I, I'll see if it works. And it does, it's held on, and I don't know if it'll uh, come off or not. Well, time will tell, vibrations. So I just wanted to show you that little thing where it's, it's almost mandatory that you have some sort of pry bar to pull these little things out. I guess while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and explain some more of these panels. This lower rocker panel on the side here will have uh, five screws. There's actually six. There's uh, five that are the hex head, one that's a, uh, a Phillips, which goes up under here, and then you got two pop pins. But you have to remember that the lower one, the one that goes down here on the bottom to the, uh, the front crowling, is a different one. It's the little short one. And I like to keep everything separate when I'm doing this in the little bags. And then this panel right here will have um, four screws. They're all uh, one or three Phillips and one of the hex and then the two bolts, 10 millimeter bolts that go down into the frame on the side. And so that, that part is off. You know, about two minutes of taking out screws and bolts and you got all these panels exposed. Now I get in to the filter on the left hand side for the variator and then I'll go ahead and start on the other side now. Just put everything with the right piece. Okay, we're going to take off the, uh, the filter here on the left hand side. Uh, it's two 10 millimeter bolts, one in front and back and then I have to check the toolkit again but I don't believe there's, it takes a three millimeter um, Allen wrench to get off this, uh, to undo the clamp screw in the back. Uh, I don't think it, there may be one in the, in the case. I'll have to check again. And then there you've got the filter off. So you can either put the bolts back in place, which on these I usually do. And then get out the old compressor and see what kind of bugs and things they chase out of here. It looks pretty good on the inside. Uh, a little fuzzy on the outside from road debris, but we'll clean that up. Uh, I think I'll be able to use some uh, vacuum first and then blow it out from the inside and then maybe a, a light brush with a, a toothbrush, a little soft toothbrush. The other thing you want to remember is when you're taking off this front crowling here, you've got these two little uh, plastic bits up here that hold the uh, high tension cable into the uh, uh, coil for the uh, spark plugs. Uh, this one I had to uh, drill some holes, in, uh, four little holes, uh, and then uh, two through the thing, and then use some little nylon ties. I don't know if you can see that or not, some little ties to hold it in place again. So, and then this one's also got these little uh, push pins down below on these flanges go into a metal bracket that's on the lower part of the uh, that holds the radiator in place so 
pretty much got all the uh, panels off now. Now I got to go find that clip that I dropped that started it all. So we'll come back. Success. I found that little bastard. It was not that far down into it, but it's one of the ones that goes in here. And I'll stick that little rascal back in place again. Okay. This is, you'll recognize, is our handlebar. I'm trying to figure out a way to pull this off and save it for resale, but to drill a hole through to put in a post for my GPS. We'll see if that works. Out. Somebody asked me once on the forum, or a question came up, is where you drain the uh, radiator system out. And there's the plug here on the lower left-hand corner on the left-hand side of the uh, scoot. Pull that plug out and drain the system, open the cap on the other side and drain it out. Put a new gasket in and put it back together again. But that's where it's at. I'll give you a better idea here. I've got my 17 inch or uh, 17 millimeter socket on the end of my long extension. And I've already broken it with the little wrench. When I first got this thing, and a lot of members have said that, uh, they thought they were never going to get the plug out, that they over torqued it at the factory. Mine was that way. But now, and we'll go ahead and drain oil. And again, it's kind of a dark honey color. It's not really that dark. Uh, so I think I've got a good break in on this at 12,000 miles. It's not black. And this is Yama Lube coming out. Uh, but I'm going to stick in the Rotella uh, Triple T. Uh, as my replacement oil from now on. It's a lot cheaper and um, it's getting really good reviews for oil. So I'm going to put that in there and then for the uh, final drive I'm going to use some uh, Valvoline High Performance 8090 weight gear oil and it is specifically for GL4, GL5 and, and MT1. The MT1 basically makes the GL5 compatible with the older transmissions that had a lot of brass and bronze in them on the synchros and stuff. It makes the GL5 play nice with those old GL4 uh, gearboxes. So I'll go ahead and let that drain out and uh, attack the uh, filter next way. <laughs> okay, we'll put our little tool on here. Move our oil cup out of the way. Okay, there we go. There. Got the oil filter off. Okay, we're going to start taking off some stuff to get in for the filter on this side, and then we'll <laughs> we get to pull the case to see how the belt's doing. So. I, Luckily, I've got a, a number three Phillips. You got to have one of those. If number two is just going to ruin these things, and these are the screws from hell. Uh, inside, I had to uh, replace them with the bolts because the uh, they stripped out. I had to uh, I had to bore them out. They just stripped. Let me get my 10 millimeter socket and move it back. Another thing you have to do is get a 12 millimeter socket in order to pull off the uh, right hand passenger foot peg. millimeter bolts. <laughs> I don't know why I got them, got them loosened up there, but I changed out these ones that I had to uh, bore out. This is the one I had to drill down through to get an easy out in, and this one's all blasted away. I did, in the original set, was able to keep one for a spare on someplace else, but these little 10 millimeter bolts are about, oh, 
30 millimeters long and uh, they work fine. So let me set those back in there. Set that away. And then here's the filter. And it's <laughs> pretty gnarly looking. Pretty gnarly looking. It's got a good collection of bugs and dust and stuff. So, And a bee. <laughs> a little bee. Poor guy. Alright, I've got one of these things loosened up. I couldn't do it at all. Just put it in your driver. Tap. I bought this thing about geez, 40 years ago. It's paid for itself. Okay. I don't know if this is absolutely necessary under the uh, in the uh, drawings there. It doesn't really show much underneath this thing. There's something behind there, but since I've never been in here, I might as well take a look. that comes off. Not yet anyway. I think I could have I think I could have left this thing on. Because the case comes off next I believe.